such a merciful God that loving him is easy. The story of Eli is one that spreads out God's mercies like clouds all over the sky. Eli, the high priest, experienced the distress of God pulling back the wonderful promise of the priesthood staying in his bloodline. The promise was replaced with a terrible curse. 1 Samuel 2 verse 31 reads, God said, The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your priestly house so that no one in it will reach old age. Even when Israel prospered, said God, none of Eli's family would experience the blessings. The sign of the beginning of the curse was that both sons, Hophni and Phinehas, would die on the same day. From then on, his seed would beg bread. The begging of bread is an indication of how God felt about Eli. Psalm 37 verse 35 reads, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So technically God was telling Eli that to me you are unrighteous. Yet, 1 Samuel 3 verse 1 says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord, and it was under the teaching and the mentorship of Eli. A paradox, right? How was the training of Samuel to be entrusted to Eli, a father deemed unfaithful and unrighteous? The answer is simple. God is merciful. And his anger is not forever. God is a real father. Yes, Eli made a mistake, a terrible one. But we see him mentoring Samuel, ensuring that when his family was cut off, the temple light would not go out as Samuel would step in. Eli was more concerned about ensuring that the temple would remain and holiness would return to Israel by training Samuel. He was now honoring God through his brokenness, through his disappointment, and through his possible dread of the future. He was just concerned about making sure that young Samuel was rightly prepared. It was Eli who guided Samuel on how to respond to the call of God. After young Samuel learned that God was about to bring the curse upon Eli and his household, he could not bring himself to tell the old man he had come to know and love as father. Eli urged Samuel, tell me exactly what God said. And then he taught Samuel a beautiful lesson in his response. 1 Samuel 3 verse 18 reads, So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. What an amazing lesson of submission to God and humility, even in the face of judgment. No doubt, God saw in Eli in that moment the priest he used to be. Eli was making good on his second chance to be a righteous father. In 1 Samuel chapter 4, God's wrath is poured out when Hophni and Phinehas dared to take the Ark of the Covenant of God into battle, knowing very well only the priest was allowed to touch the Ark. And then they carried the Ark into battle as if their show of godliness amounted to anything. The battle went against the Israelites, and both Hophni and Phinehas were killed, and the Ark was taken by the Philistines. A runner headed into the city to deliver the news. Eli was sitting by the roadside, anxiously waiting to hear something. But it was the news about the Ark of God that he wanted to hear. 
Verse 13 tells us that Eli was worried about the ark of God, not the devilish sons he had. No, the thing that bothered him the most was the ark of God and not them. This is the transformed Eli, the second chance father who was also making good on his second chance with his father. The news was not good. The Israelite army had been decimated and Eli's two sons were dead. But when Eli heard that the ark of God was taken, that was a breaking point for him. 1 Samuel 4 verse 9 says, When he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell backwards off his chair by the side of the gate. His neck was broken and he died. Eli died a transformed priest. As a second chance father, he prepared Samuel in righteousness to take over the priesthood. And as a second chance son, he repositioned God as a priority of his life. He died with a concern for the things of God most prominent in his mind. I can't help but think how inexhaustible are the mercies of God and his ways past finding out. Eli had been transformed and no doubt God's grace and mercy held him until he got to the place where God was again first place in his life. The wisdom of this story is not just for fathers, it is for all of us. It is never too late to rearrange our priorities so God has his rightful first place. God takes every effort as a living sacrifice. And though the world may not see the fruits of our labor, God does. The world may remember only the Hophni and Phinehas that we produce, but God also counts the Samuels that are guided into righteousness. So fathers, step over yesterday's blunder and take your concerns before God. Spread them out before him like a blanket and stand on the principles of God. By so doing, you safeguard your soul and your posterity. God gives many chances to us. That's just how he loves. But let us make good of these chances. Hear Isaiah 54 verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet God's unfailing love for you will not be shaken nor his covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Let us pray. Dear God, what a wonder you are. What a blessing to have you as Father and to experience your many chances. May we learn to use our chances wisely like Eli did. May we be willing to accept your will even when it hurt and bravely move into the new chances you give. Lord, help us to step over the memories of Hophni and Phinehas in our lives and embrace the opportunities you give to raise the Samuels. May the things of righteousness occupy our heart and mind, even unto death, is our prayer as we say, Amen and Amen. Amen.